Filtering, how to use this uh, filtering thing. So the green behind me isn't really there. Here, here, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn this off. Here we go, hold on. Uh, let's see if I go down here and go to filters and um, okay, there. That's what's behind me. You can see it. I think you can. Yeah, you can see what's behind me. And I'm going to turn it on. And all that green is going to become green. There it is. <laughs> there you go. So, I don't know. It just it, it makes it simpler, I guess. I, I'm trying to do the editing thing. Oh, and you can you can kind of see if I if I change the shade and stuff. Who knows what happens? Now, why I'm wearing the hat? It's not to cover up the fact that I'm uh, slightly bald. Although I've been getting balder less. Look, look, look how blue my face is. See how blue my face is? Go like that. Balances everything out. And as for shadow, no, I've got light coming right at me. You know, we're not we're not dealing with you know this sort of stuff going on. Shadows are important. Now you're you're this is the live and I'm no eventually I'm moving to new places and better things and I might get some of this keyboard and stuff. I don't know. Yes, my Bible sits here and I read it uh, regularly every day and it sits open. I keep that's one of the keys. You got to keep Bible open. If if you're not reading your Bible, usually your life's just going to have trouble. It's just to be expected. Okay, let's get through this. I've got some stuff to talk about. <clears throat> but before we get into any of that, uh, this from the... Uh, uh, now, th this is the... Li again, how this works, this is the live Twitch feed. I'm going to take this. I'm going to move it. Uh, archives are going to go to YouTube. You can watch live on Twitch whenever I do these things. It's every week, Mad Media Monday. I've been preparing and stuff. And the way this works, you can take my video and anything I say, and you can cut it out, and you can take that green and put whatever you want behind it. You can make me small. You just, I'm, I'm here. You may take me, creators may take me out, and voila. You know what I'm going to do? To be nice to the content creators. There we go. I'm going to take this little yellow thing. Because th this orange pad, people could cut it out if they wanted. Yes. So, y content creators can take me. You can take anything I say, any quotable whatever. And you can, you know, have fun with it. You don't owe me credit or anything. It's, it's my gift to the universe. This... From Yahoo Sports. <clears throat> Yahoo Sports. You know, sports.yahoo.com. We never know what we're going to find at sports.yahoo.com. So let's, before I start reading my stuff for today, and uh, where'd, my, where'd my paper go? I'm supposed to have a paper that, I, lo I, lo I lost my paper. Well, I guess, I guess we're not going to have a paper to rattle around. I thought the paper was one of the main characters. I thought I said it right on top of my, oh, Here's my blank paper <clears throat> for sound effects. No, there's no audio version of this. It's just video. From Yahoo uh, Sports. Sports.yahoo.com. You never know what you're going to find at sports.yahoo.com. But here we have it on the computer, which makes no noise as I rattle a blank paper in my hand so it sounds like I'm reading something. Trump says Russia should be at G7 meeting tomorrow. Moscow, not so sure. Y you never know what you're going to find at sports.yahoo.com. Uh, but thankfully, <clears throat> Yahoo Sports keeps us up to date on the latest uh, action, as, as we call it. See, uh, Washington, Reuters, Russia should be attending a group of seven summit in Canada, U.S. President Donald Trump said on Friday, a controversial, you know, I love it. You just get play by play. I don't think I'm going to go on, but this is a great story from Yahoo Sports. And I think that you should, uh, yeah, check out Yahoo Sports. 
excellent news source to find all the action play by play. There you have it, Yahoo Sports. Now I'm going to start doing my regular weekly records, and you're getting in on my little Maha Jesse cam as I go about my personal inner office workings. I think I'm going to move this over here, and I'm going to hit the way I figured out to deal with audio is that you have to just not record it. <laughs> Let the video record it. <clears throat> Here it goes. Encore Revival, America, June 11, 2018. Reciprocal trade is the trend of everyone. Canada charges 270% tariffs on U.S. dairy in the middle of the NAFTA. Oh, I said that wrong. And this is weird. This is just really weird. I'm going to have to stop recording. And I'm going to start recording. Stop recording. Okay, start recording. I'm sorry. I'm going to read over here. So, love you, but loved him first. <clears throat> that is a secondary monitor, by the way. No, there's a monitor. Never mind. It, it, okay, focusing. Here we go. Encore Revival America, June 11, 2018. Reciprocal trade is the trend of everyone. Canada charges 270% tariffs on U.S. dairy in the midst of the NAFTA free trade agreement. Trump threatens to charge other tariffs if trade isn't even. And Trudeau objects to reciprocal tariffs and threatens them at the same summit. If the results were allowed to speak for themselves, it would be hard to know if anyone wants free trade or reciprocal tariffs or if people just want to argue. But the results aren't in yet. Until they are, we don't know. Trump left a G7 summit, wishing it were a G8 summit to include Russia, making it a G6 summit while he left for his own G2 summit in Singapore with Kim Jong-un. Trump solidified the certainty of that summit by canceling it. Reciprocal trade will almost surely be on the shelf. Western press can't not speculate, especially with the old wives' tale, that investment is the primary source of economic stimulation, generally overlooking hard work, balancing free markets with regulation and ingenuity. The reason Russia is not at the G7-8 summit is because it took back Crimea via referendum. Kerchev gave Crimea to the Ukraine in 1954, which was a controversy all to its own. The Obama administration's response was to alienate Russia. Russia's main faux pas in the recovery of Crimea was flying its Russian flag over a government building taken by Russian soldiers prior to the referendum. But that received little attention. The West's opinion at the time was largely limited to who should own what territory in Ukraine and Russia. Amazon is listening and respecting the religious needs of its Muslim workers in the Twin Cities. Fasting is hot work, and the Muslim immigrants need a cooler, slower-paced work environment during Ramadan. No word in the news, however, on reciprocal trade working conditions, such as whether Amazon has negotiated for disposable barbecue celebrations for Taoists on Chinese holidays, or Fish Friday for Catholics who have so generously emigrated to Muslim countries. Talk show news, Pandalum. Oh, you know, <clears throat> I need to stop this. Go back. Talk show news. This is spelled wrong. Hold on, I'm a, I have to make some edits. I'm going to have to make some edits. Here we go. This is why I'm here. There. And uh, okay, all ready to go. I'm supposed to act sad for this because I am sad. And I've been going through all the news items, and then now we come to this. 
Talk show news punditdom is losing in life. A lion of the mind, Charles Krauthammer. When the other talking heads from the Potomac... <clears throat> you know, you're getting all the bloopers here. This is great. You're getting all the bloopers here. Really, I've loved Krauthammer for a long time. Um, and I'm, I, I, I feel, I mean, he's already missed. Talk show news punditdom is losing in life a lion of the mind, Charles Krauthammer. When the other talking heads from the Potomac Beltway and NPR niggled over opinions of the press and heads of state, Krauthammer explained the three-step process of delivering a nuclear weapon and where Kim Jong-il had made progress within those steps. He resented terms like Washington establishment and also objected to Trump for fighting against an establishment he deemed mythical. He represented a sobering voice of reason and calm, disagreed with almost everyone about something, politely held to his own opinions, and remained courteous in discussion. He shared a letter within the past few days that cancer is ending his life and he has only weeks to live. The world of ideas and politics already misses him, as do I. Encore. Revival is returning to America. Um, yeah. yeah. You have all these things in the news, and then you get to that, and then what do you say, you know? Um... I don't. I, I, I kind of feel irreverent putting all this comedy. I mean, the news is comical anymore, and here Charles is. Charles is dying. Charles Krauthammer. I don't. I don't know if you know who Charles Krauthammer is, but he was amazing. He was not run of the mill. He was not script. Okay, time to do the cadence of conflict. <clears throat> Cadence of Conflict, Asia, June 11, 2018. The historians and experts are all hysterical about the historic meeting between Trump and Kim. They warn that JFK appeared too weak, while Nixon's aggression didn't intimidate. No one can win in the eyes of the hindsight expert who sees himself as the smartest guy in the room. But history has already been made. Trump brought warm beer home. And... Kim to the table. No one has done either before as a sitting president. For the record, former President Bill Clinton did bring home Lisa Ling's younger sister from North Korea under Kim Jong-il, but he wasn't president at the time, and he wasn't dealing with the same leader. Still, Clinton deserves kudos. Presidents Clinton and Trump should have a victory cigar together at some point, Kim Jong-un is a kid who has never known the free world, though there are rumors of him having attended school as a kid in Europe. It would have been just enough to gain an appetite, not an understanding. Donald J. Trump is an old, wealthy man, with talk of a McDonald's and a Trump resort in North Korea being on Kim's wish list. Everyone should expect the conversation to be that of the young kid eagerly asking daddy for gifts. Trump's answer will likely be similar to his response to Senator Feinstein. Sure, we can do that. With the added, but those things aren't given by eternally rich countries since no country is eternally rich. Those things are part of a world culture of people coming in and going out but your father and grandfather wouldn't let people go in or out. If you just let people go in and out, you can get those things yourself without having to ask me. Okay, now I have to stop this because WordPress has decided to uh, log out, which is a reason that I am creating my own. Uh, I wonder if they're fixing this in WordPress 5. Uh... We'll see if they're fixing it. I'm going to have to come over here to type my weird little password. 
Um, oh, password. Let's see if that works. Oh, it doesn't. Well, I'm sorry. This live stream has been interrupted by WordPress. Is it not stopping? OK, the, st the stream isn't stopping. OK, well, we'll have to. Maybe it hasn't been interrupted by WordPress. Let's see how we're going to do this. No, I'm really sorry. But see, look, look what WordPress just did. It just did this. I'm here, I'm happy, and it decided to log me out. And so now I have to type my password in off the screen, which is a problem. Um, so cheers to WordPress and those that will replace them. I, you know, see, the, here's the thing. I'm allowed to complain about software development because I write my own. In all likelihood, no one has ever told those things to Kim Jong-un before. Not even... <coughs> you stop reading, you're on a roll, and it messes you up. See, this is why creative people get irritated with stuff like this. No, I'm leaving this. WordPress, you wanted your cameo, you got it. You're there, you're on, you're live. In all likelihood, no one has ever told those things to Kim Jong-un before, not even South Korean President Moon, who began the current outreach. Everyone has his role. Moon was the charm. Trump may be the evangelist who delivers the good news no one else could. This meeting is not about a hashed out, jigsawed deal. It's about the only man in the world with both the power and the words to explain life and love to the only man in the world who can't receive those ideas from anyone else. As Trump and Kim prepare to meet tomorrow, the main news in the Western press about China is possibly spying on the Trump-Kim summit. That and flashbacks to Nixon and Mao. The rest focuses on the old scripts of news in China, econ economics. Okay, I need to edit this because this threw me off because, hold on. As Trump and Kim prepare to meet tomorrow, the main news in the Western press As Trump and Kim prepare to meet tomorrow, the main news in the Western press about China is China possibly spying on the Trump-Kim summit. That and flashbacks to Nixon and Mao. The rest focuses on the old script of news in China, economics. The SCO summit includes Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Russia, China, and India. They basically met to agree that they agree. Clearly, China and its neighborhood is solidifying a stark alliance to contrast morphing alliances in the West and the West's growing alliance with some nations to China's East. And that is the cadence of the conflict already seen in the Pacific. Um, two spaces here and save this. Okay. <clears throat> now you've seen the inside. Um, I'm going to... Where are we? Where are my drafts? No, I don't need to write the point this week. Listen, you know, green screen... I mean, probably nobody's watching this now, but this is going in the archives, and we're going to keep this, and this is what my life is like every single week. Every single Monday I do this. Um, 
Okay. Uh, I suppose it's time to begin the normal podcast. This is the regular, proper, I'm supposed to plan it kind of podcast. So I'm going to hit the record button. Although that, that, there's an air conditioner up there. You can't see it. I can. I can smell it. It's making my nose. <sighs> air conditioners. Finally getting everything done. Green screen behind me. Now, you've already missed... Uh, how many minutes have you missed? You've already missed 20 minutes from the live stream. But this is the podcast proper for those of you who want all of Jesse, the all-loving, all-caring Maha Jesse in 10 minutes or less. And I get to the point, too. I promise to get to the point. Now, I'm still working on... Uh, media stuff and I'm testing stuff. So we're kind of here in beta. This is beta. And I'm getting a new studio soon and I'm getting serious. You know, for a long time, I just wouldn't do videos because I've got this compulsive need to do a good job with everything that I do. Uh, speaking of that, this week, it came up multiple times. See, as I've been getting jesse.coffee and jesse.church and jesse.house ready and prepped with the Patreon account and offering people exclusive uh, uh, participation in discussions and streams and in-house kind of semi, uh, what do they call it? Real reality TV type stuff, you know, inside, you know, bloopers and that sort of thing. As I'm getting all this set up, I'm going through multiple social media sources. I'm, I'm dealing with new, me new social media accounts. I'm dealing with, uh, like I create a new account, like 10 people like or subscribe or whatever it is within a few, you know, hours. And this, there's this trend that's come up and I've, I don't know how many people I've dealt with this week. Uh, could have been three, four dealing with social media marketing. Now I have found, I just, I got to thinking, I was like, well, I don't like it when people create a social media. I don't think anybody like anybody who uses social media, not someone who has it, someone who uses it. They use whatever, Facebook, Instagram, Line, WeChat, WhatsApp. They use it to talk to their friends. They use it to see what their friends are up to and to show their friends what they're up to. The mission of social media, the basic idea, people using it for why it was created. I don't think anyone that uses it likes people creating brands and those brands pretending to be a friend in order to make new friends. I, I, I don't think anybody likes that. I never have. I remember back in the 20 aughts when Twitter was new, even through 2011. And people on Twitter would share ideas. They'd connect with existing friends. They'd make new ones based on their common interests. And they'd share little ideas. And they loved on each other back and forth. They, it, they, they, it was really a fun thing. And then business discovered it. And I, I haven't had many interactions at all on Twitter that I think are real. When, when, I, when I was first starting to do tweet stuff, I was a little bit shy with my podcast and my media stuff because I just want to have good camera stuff. I want to have good microphones. I just couldn't do stuff with bad quality. I just couldn't do it. I've seen two, I watched the movie Asteroid and my tech friend watched it with me. We survived. Um, 
during that time, I was watching Twitter and I was enjoying stuff, but I wasn't saying much. When I finally started saying things on Twitter, goodness, the, the, the people that like or retweet my tweets or whatever, they're businesses, they're brands, they're I'm so-and-so selling such-and-such. And I don't feel that any of the interaction is real. And I saw that as a downfall. It's like the, the reason that marketing on social media, on Twitter, whatever, the reason it's useful is because you have real people there doing real things. Now, I kind of liked the, the onion, you know, the, the fake news, faux news it's called, the, the onion thing about it. it was a, they did these fake TED Talks. It, it was like a spinoff of TED Talks. I forgot what they were called. It was talks or whatever. And they did this social media bot thing where we're, we're going to take your social media and, and we're going to, you know, make people like your page or whatever. And we're going to charge you $1,000 for something a 13-year-old could have done free. And eventually, the internet will be completely replaced by humans and it will just be robots following each other. And, and that, that's kind of how people feel. Well, I deal with, I, I mean, I get social media because I, I use it. I, I understand it. I, I throw in some elbows and punches. It makes sense to me. And the more ads and commercializing go into that, it's like taxing. It, I mean, it is taxing in the, in the non-financial sense, in the emotional sense. It exhausts people. It makes people tired. People don't like junk mail. It's called junk for a reason. Email, it's spam. And creating a social media account as a brand, it's great. You got a brand, people want to connect with your brand and know what's going on. But creating it in order to so that to try to get to make other people to get them to for trying to accomplish to the end of getting to so that I can make in order to thus therefore and go. It's just annoying. And it, it's in some ways it's tempting for me to, you know, get a brand and try to go like people to try to get attention. No, look at me. I'm the attention getter like that. That's kind of tempting for about half a second. And then I imagine myself right away, because when I consider doing something, I run around in my mind about what it's going to look like from the other side. I imagine myself half a second later logging in and seeing myself doing that to me as someone else. And I go, no, 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 I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. So I've had a number of people, this has been coming up this week. I, I started uh, minds.com and someone was liking every single thing that I posted. I'm like, well, that, that's great. This person really likes me. And then I find out this person has like right on the, I believe in mutual stuff. And if you give it, you should get it back and you're giving and receiving. And, and, and what this lady does is she, all she does is shout out to other people. People who like her back, she shouts out to them and it becomes a mutual admiration society. Well, I like that lady. She's got some nice stuff, but let's all like each other. I mean, a social media profile where all you do is like other people who like you back. What? There's no content. So I, uh, <clears throat> I decided that I, I wouldn't, um, I decided that I wouldn't. And I did a little bit of searching and I, I, and I thought about it and I said, you know, I think that's actually illegal, like, like in their bylaws, not according to, to government law, but in their, in their bylaws, social media, you could get banned for doing that to people. You know, I think I should get to the point. Everyone everywhere has been told and has learned that hard work pays off. So take the road with the hardest work. Choose a paths. You know what? This is uh I have to edit this. I I've got a D point. This is you you just had a live moment on the on the podcast. And how do you feel about that? Everyone everywhere has been told and has learned that hard work pays off. So take the road with the hardest work. Choose the paths that pay. Shortcuts can be useful in developing areas, but neither as permanent routes nor long-term strategies. 
cutting the soap consumption, reducing towel waste by 10%, downsizing 2% of the labor force, and buying up brands that only the selling founders understand might improve figures for the month or even the quarter, but they are no framework for an ongoing strategy. As with art, bodybuilding, and innovation, the champion's secret ingredient is elbow grease. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.